Hello, friends. Chris Matthew with Forbidden Knowledge News. We will soon be starting production of the second film in the Forbidden Documentary series. I want to first thank everyone that has donated and has been a part of this first film production. The first film is still in the pre-sale phase, and we are in the process of getting it submitted officially to all the streaming platforms. We are still completely self-funded, and in order to have the means for travel for the next film, as well as lodging and equipment, we will need to sell pre-orders of our first film or get donations. You can help. By donating, by using the link in the description, or you can help by purchasing the pre-release of the Forbidden Documentary, Occult Louisiana. All those links are right there in the description. Any amount is always greatly appreciated. Any donation of $20 or more, and you will get a PDF copy of A Warning from History by Corey Hughes and a free download of the Forbidden Documentary. Again, if you'd like to help, all the links are in the description, and anything is greatly appreciated. Stay tuned after this announcement for a clip from the forbidden documentary, Occult Louisiana. Legends like Bigfoot and Rougarou have become intertwined with Louisiana culture, and are often celebrated during local festivities and events that bring the community together in a very unique way. My name is Jonathan Foray, and I am the executive director of the South Louisiana Wetlands Discovery Center. We educate young people about coastal land loss issues. And so every once in a while, the story of the Rugaru would come up, and these kids had no idea. They were like, what? What's that? What's that all about? And so we knew, you know, our oral traditions were no longer being passed down. Um, in the way that they were when I was a kid. And so we knew we needed to do something to kind of revitalize that. And so we thought, I mean, we're in Louisiana, what better way to bring something back to life than to make a festival around it, right? We've got festivals celebrating just about everything. And so, but there wasn't one celebrating the Rugaru. And so we thought, hey, maybe we, we cornered the market on this one. And, um, and so it's just been, it's been wonderful to see sort of this uh, resurrection of these stories that people just weren't talking about anymore. And and now the kids in our area know the story of the Rugaru and they come to the festival and they play the games and they, you know, enjoy the food and the music. And it's 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 been a success in bringing those stories back. We found all of the best cooks we found out who's my mom cooked the best seafood gumbo and then we were like we need you to make the gumbo for the festival so the food is really top notch and it's it's all cooked by volunteers we've got about 250 plus volunteers that put the event together we've got live music we have two stages um, we've got our main stage where the musicians play and then we have a second stage where we have uh, we call it our narrative stage and this is an area where we have tradition bearers come and talk about the traditions that they keep and how they do them. We also have um, a traiteur that is going to be coming. And so those are sort of the traditional healers of the bayou. Um, there were a lot more of those back in the day than there are now. We have people talking about medicinal plants. You know, what plants are growing in the swamps that people are using to be able to uh, make medicines to, to heal folks. So that's a lot of fun. Carnival rides, games, big Ferris wheel, all that stuff. Arts and crafts vendors. We've got a parade. So there's a parade. We've got the Rugaru witches, which are probably about 150 to 200 ladies that dance in that parade. This is going to be our 12th year. National Geographic has featured us, Southern Living, Women's Day Magazine. Like we've had a lot of big publications highlight some of the work we do. USA Today ranked us as one of the top 10 costume parties in the country. Um, so that was a lot of fun. The Louisiana Travel Association awarded us with best festival in the state of Louisiana for this year. It's a, it's a lot of fun and it's a lot of work. You know, it's, it's definitely culturally 
relevant, but because we have that story of the Rougarou that isn't in a lot of other places, it really makes this event special. So the Rougarou, in order to protect yourself from an attack, so this is probably, this is very important for your listening uh, or your, your viewing audience, right? Here's how to protect yourself. You get a colander, so it's like a, a strainer. You put the colander on your front door and you're good to go because the Rougarou is OCD about counting things. And so he goes to your house to break into your house and then he starts counting the holes that are on the colander, right? And he can only count to the number 12 and he can't, so he can't count pass up. So he gets to 12 and he doesn't know 13 and he gets frustrated. And so then he starts counting one more time. One, two, three, he gets to 12, doesn't know 13. So he just stays there focused on this. And then the sun comes up and he has to retreat back into the swamp. You can do the same thing with 13 pennies. And that's because like you would put 13 pennies on your windowsill or on the front of your door. Rugaru is not good at math and a little bit OCD. The folklore is very much embedded in Catholicism. And that may be a little bit of the French influence because a lot of the French folks coming in from Canada and from France were largely Catholic. So there are some rules about, you know, don't do these types of things on holy days of obligation or something bad is gonna happen. My uncle, my uncle believes that. And look, I mean, I wasn't there. I can't discount what he saw or what he didn't see. But, you know, he tells this story of when he was about 14 years old. This was on All Souls Day. And my uncle, who's 14, his family's not there, but he wanted to go hunting for rabbits. And so he knew that it was All Souls Day and he should not be going hunt for rabbits because it's just sort of the, the law in Catholicism, right? Some of these rules that are, that are made up for that. And so he goes out and uh, his little dog is with him and he's looking for rabbits and everything. And he tells the story of, he sees a rabbit, he pulls his uh, rifle up to shoot the rabbit. And as soon as he does so, he hears this like, kind of behind him and so he kind of he kind of slowly turns around and then this is when he you know says that he had an encounter with the Rugaru. he sees this big huge tall dog man looking thing with red eyes and just really scary looking and and so he drops his gun he turns he runs he's running back to his house at this time and he says he can hear something running behind him and he thinks it's coming after him